Hello everyone, this is Ginger Williams coming to you tonight with the launch of the Woodland Critters um, Shaker Card Kit. And I'm so glad to have you all joining me. Um, tonight's format was, it was, I know it said on the opening splash screen it was previously recorded, but I kept having problems with my video cutting out while I was recording this afternoon, so I had to give that up. So I am live tonight coming to you from my craft room. And I, I'm going to try to hop on and see some comments, but it's hard for me to do that while I'm uh, working away. So please do leave comments, though. We do have a giveaway to give to one lucky person. And so if you are commenting down in the bottom, I will try to watch and answer some of that. But please know that we have a 20, uh, 20, uh, yes, $20 gift card going away to one of you um, just for commenting and participating in the live tonight. Way more fun to talk and visit um, when possible, um, through the comments. Um, also just make sure you stay till the end tonight. We do have a little bit of a sneak peek, actually two sneak peeks that are coming to you tonight. And, uh, you want to stick around for that. And then also at the end of me actually being live, we do have a pre-recorded video from Rebecca that will be going up showing you the forest family stamp and uh, matching die set. Um, so stick around for that. You don't have to transfer to a different stream. Theoretically, cross your fingers for me. <laughs> it should work out that we should be able to put that up as soon as I conclude and you won't have to go anywhere else. Hopefully that will work as we intend. So, um, thanks for joining again tonight. It's so good to have so many of you here. It looks like we've got almost 200 of you here. Wow. Making me nervous, but this is exciting. So nothing to be nervous about. Let's get those comments rolling, though. Um, where are you watching from tonight? I'd love to hear where you guys are all at tonight. So I get ready to dive into this kit. Let me move some of my samples out of the way. And I can start talking about what is in this fabulously fun, super cute kit. All right. So first of all, this is how I store my kits. I use a little um, six by six iris box. It's kind of a fun way to um, keep track of everything because it does fit paper pads. So you'll see me in the way I store it. This is not the way your kit will come. It will come um, nicely packaged, but we'll have to do maybe some separating to figure out what goes with what. So we'll, I'll go through that in just a minute. Oh, and I forgot to put this back in the kit. So first up, let's go through it. There is a wonderful stamp set that goes with the theme. Of forest friends and I'm sure you can see how they might match up to some of those forest critters um, we have in this kit let me you know before we do the stamp set let's go ahead and show you what the shapes are the animal shapes are you've probably seen the samples on our website by now but here we go this is what we have here so bear a fox a raccoon a hedgehog slash porcupine it's one of those shapes that you can uh, kind of customize. We left it a little bit vague so that you would have a chance to be able to kind of decide what you wanted it to be. Also a skunk and then chipmunk, although technically, you know, if you leave the stripe off the tail or do some other color customizing, you could also do a squirrel there. And then the beaver and then also some of these accent dyes that I will talk about um, in just a minute. There's something special about what's going on with those. But that kind of is a good lead in to what the sentiments are in this kit. So I bring those back up again. Here we go with you are so stinking awesome for our skunk. Hope your birthday is wild, which we could go with any of the shapes. Well, this stinks. No, I'm thinking of you again for our skunk. Hey there, little rascal. Great for uh, specifically the um, raccoon, but you could go with a few others there too. The world just got cuter. Congrats. Fun way to do a baby card or a congratulations um, for, uh, you know, expecting that kind of thing would be really fun. I'm nuts about you. Perfect for the squirrel slash chipmunk. And then this happy birthday and the thank you and the missing you actually can be, they can stand alone, but they could also go with this one here. Sneaking by to say thank you. Sneaking by to say missing you. Sneaking by to say happy birthday. Any of that kind of thing. So those kind of are optional go together stamps. Also looking sharp for your porcupine. Um, I hope your day is awesome. Great for that beaver. Scent with love. Perfect for your skunk. You are the very best. Perfect for the teddy bear or for the bear. Could be teddy bear or bear, right? 
I like how you roll if you're going to customize as the hedgehog. That works for that one. Uh, what would I do without you? Again, for that beaver. And it's your birthday. Let's go nuts. Fun for those squirrel slash chipmunk shapes. And of course, hello. I forgot that one. But a very versatile stamp set. We like to do that. We like to be able to um, make sure that when you buy a kit like this, that you get lots of use from it for lots of different occasions and that you feel like you got a lot of value out of um, what you can make with it. Let's look at the paper pad. As is fairly typical for us, it's 16 styles, 24 double-sided papers, three sheets each of um, eight. So you can see here, got kind of a feminine color scheme and a slightly masculine color scheme, but they can be mixed and matched. You know, it's not, not straight up feminine or masculine. Lots of fun options that could go kind of either way. Lots of fun florals here. Lots of, um, I had lots of fun coloring and designing different floral patterns for this set. Woodlands creatures to me just seem to call for that. More plaids. Just some fun kind of leaf motifs on some of these. So lots of great colors. And kind of some fun deviations, colors that we haven't really done much of before. A little, little different look for us, but one that I'm really happy with how that turned out. Also, you get a fun set of coordinating not the die. <laughs> there it is. Coordinating toppings. And you know, these particular shape, can you see my inky hands? Who else has inky hands out there? Did that happen to anybody else? <laughs> I didn't even check before I went live. Ink, ink on my hands. But coordinating colors and shapes that are perfect for this kit. And all of the dies. Now, yours won't come like this. Yours will come on a sheet that you'll have to pull um, off the sheet and get organized. I do recommend with this set especially that you do work on getting them organized so that you can easily figure out what, what goes to what. That way you only have to figure it out one time. You don't have to go back to a pile of dies and go, okay, which one was for the skunk again and which one was for the bear again? You'll just know. And, oh, I left them over here. Let's uh, show them separately, but there's also some special dies. Oh, she stuck to my magnets. <laughs> here we go. There's some special dies in this kit because if you've noticed, these uh, shapes have a lot in common, right? The bodies of our animals are all exactly the same. And the only part that is different about them, let's see, that's an accent die, is the like heads and or like tails. And so for this kit, I'm also recommending that you kind of sort, and I've got my accent dies here. <laughs> I'm supposed to be organized, but um, some days better than others. <laughs> but your body dies, you want to keep those all together and then you can uh, build your bodies and then just find your head and or tail pieces, face pieces for each shape. And then you'll be able to take your body, get that done and then customize to whatever animal you want. Let's see, where's my extras bag? There we go. So the extras, let's talk about the extra dies for a minute. Actually, let's talk about the foam and then I'll tell you what's going on with the extra dies. Okay. So, Here's the foam, and as you can see, there are two sheets with six foam pieces each. It was supposed to be more than that. We had a snafu with the way that this came packaged to us. It wasn't what we asked for. So it's a little bit less than we had wanted to have, but uh, we thought about how we could make that up to you. And so rather than having the outline die separate, or rather than giving away um, the accent dies as a separate purchase, or as a like free with a large purchase, you are going to get all of the accent dies and the outline die for free in order to make up for the fact that we normally would have had a little bit more of the foam in here. Now, of course, you can buy refills. So if you want more foam, those refills are available. But just know that, um, honestly, with the price of the kit the way it is, you're still coming out ahead because dies cost more than foam. And getting all of these accent dies and this outline die included in your kit is a pretty sweet trade-off um, if, you know, we can't have it quite the way we wanted. I think you still come out ahead this way. So thank you for bearing with that particular issue. Of course, we'll be ordering more foam. There will be more foam available. But hopefully this way you still find lots of, uh, of great things about this kit that make it uh, worth getting some extra foam a little later if you need to. And of course, there is 12 in here. You can still make quite a bit with just one foam purchase. You're all the way up to 24, so plenty to keep you busy for a long time. Also, of course, in this kit, 
you're also going to have some action, you know, like extra add-ons of things that you can add to it. So, oh, and I didn't say what these were either, in case you're wondering what these are. These are, so you've got some mushroom dyes here and some acorn dyes. These little mushrooms are the little one and the big one, the grass, and then this is your stump dye with your top tier stump. And again, the outline dye that goes really with your body pieces would be a better place to store that. And then, of course, you can add additional things. Like I mentioned, you can buy additional foam. But you can also, and I do highly recommend it. Where did I bury it? There it is. Here is the solid paper pad. Now, the solid paper pad is really, really useful because in addition to having these coordinating colors that match the paper pad, I also went a little extra into um, colors that don't necessarily match the paper pad but coordinate with it. Colors that would look good, like for your fox, your beaver, your raccoon, your skunks. Different colors that would help you get the bodies of your animals. So if you can add that, I do highly recommend, you know, just for the ease of not having to track down two or three different brown colors or two or three different gray colors. They're all right here in the solid paper pad. And you can get that um, as an additional bundle just to get an additional pattern paper with the solids or you can actually do it bundled with an additional foam refill as well and get the whole bundle. <laughs> so there's also extra toppings are also available as a separate purchase as well. So that's the kit. That's what's in the kit. Lots of great um, ways to use it. Lots of great ways to take that one body shape and customize it for so many different animals. So let me take you to my desk and I can transfer you over to look at uh, some samples that the design team came up with, and they're just absolutely adorable. There we are. Okay. And we can take a look at what um, the design team made with this kit. Some really gorgeous and fun things. I had my own fun, of course, but look at this one by Mary Ann. Isn't this bear cute? <laughs> And I love that she added the balloon, and I love that she added the little rascal to the bear, because, of course, sometimes you have those little rascals, and they're, uh, you know, cute, too. So a good option for using that sentiment beyond just the raccoon. And speaking of the raccoon, here's one of mine sneaking by to say happy birthday. So fun way to use that one. And you can see, oh, let me go back real fast. So you can see that this particular raccoon uses, like, three different colors, and that's why that paper pad, the solids, is really helpful to get you the different shades of gray all in one stop. And look how cute Greta's skunk is. Isn't that adorable? You are so stinking awesome. I don't know if it's a generation thing or a locality thing, but um, I've got some people in my family that say stinking when they're saying, you know, stinking cute, stinking awesome, stuff like that. So of course we had to have a sentiment that reflected that for our skunk. And okay, here's the fox. The world just got cuter. Congrats. What a fun way to uh, send a baby congratulations. So love that we had baby options for this cute little woodland baby animal set. Okay, from Greta again. You are the very best. Isn't that adorable? Love, love, love the color scheme there. And then Marianne, look, she did all three critters, you know, or three of the seven critters on this card. Really great way to say, hope your birthday is wild by having all three of them. And look how cute are the little balloons. I love that. And another one by Mary Ann. You are so stinking awesome. Isn't that sweet? I love it. <laughs> it's cute to have the red color there. A bit of a surprise color in there. Um, another one by me. You are the very best. And you can see use, you know, there of the stump and the mushrooms as well in that one. And another one by me, the squirrel, or the chipmunk, I used it as a chipmunk. It's your birthday, let's go nuts. And again, you can see the grass and the acorn, so better look at those accent dyes there. And from Greta, what would I do without you? And I love that she put the heart on top of her beaver. And you know, if you want to, you could even take the little paw dyes that are supposed to be like the front, um, the front feet, and you could raise those up as if it was holding the heart too, if you wanted to have your animals hold a little something, a sign, a heart, a flower. Um, by Greta also, hey there little rascal. Cute, I like the blending of the pink and the blue together there. Okay, and the beaver, hope your day is awesome. Can you tell I have boys 
<laughs> awesome. We have to have an awesome sentiment in there. And from Greta the Fox again. Super cute. And here's, uh, if you're going to roll, I guess this is the hedgehog version of this one. Can you tell I had a hard time choosing just one pattern paper? I wanted to use it all. <laughs> so lots of little bits here and there of the pattern paper so I could use as much as possible. Okay, well, this stinks. Know that I'm thinking of you. How fun is this? Love that this gives you a sentiment to send something cheerful, maybe to somebody going through something hard. Nice to have that option. Okay, it's your birthday. Let's go nuts. What a cute way to use the chipmunk with another fun, cheerful color scheme from Greta. Okay, so that's a good look at our designer samples. Let me take you back over to my desk and let's make a sample together as well. And then maybe to keep the comments going, let's see if I can take you back to my desk. Sometimes it wants to cooperate and sometimes it doesn't. There we go. Let me know what your favorite animal was from the kit. Um, that would be awesome to be able to know what everyone's favorite is. Okay, so I'm going to move the kit aside. And then I have a fun little uh, card all set to put together here. Let me put my dies back. I know if I don't do it now, I won't remember. <laughs> so we'll get our main body dies put away. And let's see. There's the bag for the extras. Right. I'm sorry, I can't see your comments. I thought I had it working, but sometimes my iPad just wants to log me out of Facebook. Today's one of those days that it does. So I will go back and I'll answer any comments um, directed specifically to me a little later. But in the meantime, let me first run you through what's happening with um, what I'm going to show you here. Sometimes it's nice to be able to hear what foundation dies I'm using. So I'm going to run through and show you the numbers on these. That way, if you decide you want to follow suit and do something similar, you've got basically um, all that you need to know there. So obviously this is number eight. This is the large A2 rectangle. And then this is number 19, that rounded rectangle. And then our large banner is from foundation two. And this smaller banner is from foundation 11. Always have to check. I think I know, but sometimes I get wrong. And this little accent die is from 24. And then I'm using one from 19 for the sentiment. And then I've got these little flower dies here from um, the fancy flower set. So if you're curious, I can't remember if this is actually a sketch, an official sketch, but then I guess I should make it one. But I really like this general format for making a card that then can be duplicated over and over again, particularly with a kit like this where you have the same, um, what's the right word? You have the same, like the animals are all the same size. And so you really don't have to worry too much about whether or not you're saving enough space. You can uh, easily decide how you want to design a whole bunch of different, um, you know, cards for these animals using the same sketch if you want, but you know they're all, they're all going to fit because other than maybe the tails or maybe the hedgehog, if you're using that body, you might have to make some alterations, but otherwise they're all going to fit in the same area. Okay, so let me grab my glue real fast. And I'm trying something new with my glue, which I'm not sure if I would like or not. Maybe you can tell me in the comments if you have something you like better. So I use art glitter glue usually, or sometimes very art glue. Um, and I know that there's, you know, I know many of you have like a glue press or something that you like because it makes it so that you don't have to constantly uh, cork your glue bottle with a pin. Um, I've tried a few different things. This is my latest. <laughs> I didn't. I don't like the glue press because I don't want to. I don't want a, a big, you know, gun to hold onto yet. Maybe if I get a little older, if arthritis is an issue, maybe I'll like that. But for right now, I just want my small little bottle and my precision tip so I can see what I'm doing easily. Let me zoom this in a little bit so you can see better. But um, but I do like that the, the holders make it so that your glue doesn't dry up and you don't have to constantly tip, put the needle back in. So this is like a little, what is this, a candle? A old, it used to have a candle a long, long time ago. And a couple of small pieces of silicone that I just cut up and threw in there um, to help cork my bottle. So I've only been using it a couple days. I haven't decided if I like it or if it works well. 
So far I haven't had a problem getting a clog while I'm gluing a couple of projects. So I guess that's good, but <laughs> I haven't decided if it's going to work out for me or not. So if you have something that you've tried and worked better, I've tried a few glue stands before, but I still get my glue dried up eventually. So that's why I'm branching out to just do my own, my own thing. But if you've got a suggestion for me, I'd love to hear it in the comments. So yes, <laughs> old habits stay hard. Even remembering to put it back in my folder, even when I'm talking about it, <laughs> it's hard to okay, start new habits. Otherwise, it's going to get a clog in it just because I left it out. Okay, so that's number eight piece glued to my card front. Oh, swish, hold still. Okay. And then we'll glue this fun floral panel on the front here. It's not quite to the top, down just a little. To make it easier to get in there or to get this bit on there later. Okay. I like this particular design because basically anytime you have a set of pattern papers where you've got like um, high contrast between a few of the colors, which most Queen and Company paper pads do have, it makes it really easy to pick a couple of fun contrasting colors that are in one of the patterns and then quickly use kind of the same general layout to put together a card. So if I get them in a, a crunch, like, oh, no, I just remembered I need a card for this or I need a card for that, I kind of default to this kind of general uh, layout <laughs> for a lot of the cards that I'm quickly throwing together because I know it just almost always works. It's a good one for just being sure that you've got something that's well-balanced. You'll see how in a minute I'm going to make a visual triangle with my yellow colors and having a little accent that you can add to a corner or something like that makes it easy to do that. But first, let's pay some attention to our, our cute skunk. We're going to use the skunk on this card. And I'm going to fill him up. And I already put together, let's see, a little tray here with his mix. From the kit, I've got some of these fun little um, yellow, uh, well, let's see, confetti. Confetti and then these little white or ivory flowers, the female flowers. And then I threw in a few diamonds in yellow and white just for my own stash, just to give it a little sparkle. So let's fill him up. That's a runaways. And you can see kind of the cute look of that yellow against the black. Almost like, reminds me of a bee or a bumblebee. Make sure they stay low enough in there. It's pretty full, but I kind of like it with these colors from the full. And let's pull back that acetate cover. And plop that on there. There we go. I'll seal it up. And you can see, even though it was pretty full, by the time you, you know, stand it up, they uh, collect at the bottom pretty good. So sometimes nice to get it pretty full in there. Right. And we'll glue his top on. You can see with the paws, I have that little bit of foam tape kind of helping me lift the paws up just a little bit so they don't get lost. It doesn't look good to look like your animal only has two feet or two legs. We want all four legs on our animals. So let's get that on there. Okay. And then for the head, you're going to have a lot of these foam pieces left over from the middle of your animals. And they are great for helping support the heads of your animals here. So you're just going to take that, peel it off, just for the sake of making sure things stay together. I'm going to go ahead and take that little bit of glue and make sure we actually glue them together. And then you can kind of decide how far down you want his head to go. Oh, I didn't glue the body down, did I? <laughs> Almost missed that. Make sure he's centered. Center. There we go. Okay. And now he's together. But we want some glue on his body too. I don't want him falling off my card here. Alright. Let's get him all set here. Move him pretty far down just to be certain there's room for a sentiment above. That's pretty good. Stick his head down good. You know, with his um, face, with the face on all my animals, I found it really helps 
um, when you're cutting them out, you can see how many little faces I cut out of this piece of black cardstock. But I put score tape on the back of almost anything that I'm cutting little tiny pieces out of. And that way it makes it so that I can easily um, make it like a sticker. When I get done, you can see I've got some little ears I didn't need to use for that color. But if I take them out and just peel the back off, then either with my fingernails or with a pair of tweezers, I can just go quickly place, or my little uh, wax tip pen, and then I can go easily place what I need to without having to worry about glue seeping out anywhere or having to put little dots of glue wherever. So one tip I do like a lot with these face dies. Um, and I can't remember, did I tell you you get a face die for every animal? I hope so. <laughs> I did this video earlier trying to record it, and I can't remember if I told you or not. Just in case I didn't, there's a separate die for every animal for the face. Even though, you know, if you look, really the face here between our raccoon and our skunk is identical. Um, you know, the mouth could be optional. On my more serious card, where I did a sentiment about, you know, this one, the stinks, you know, I'm thinking of you, I left the smile off. That's not really... I didn't, you know, I didn't feel like the smile was appropriate. So you'll find some of the uh, the animals have uh, dyes that um, don't have that because they don't need it, like the fox doesn't need it. But even though there's overlap, even though the mouths are the same, even though the noses are the same, you'll see that we gave you a dye for each animal anyways, just to help you stay organized and just to help make it easier to bag them up separately, um, which is why you end up with, was it 42 dyes in this kit? So by the time you get the extra ones, the bonus ones, you get one outline die extra, plus the eight accent dies extra, plus the 33 that are in the kit. So great value with this kit, having that many dies. That might be the most dies we've ever had in a kit before. Okay, so let me finish moving my pieces down here. Here's my little accent. And it's gonna go right up here. If I wasn't talking so much, I probably would have checked that first. I probably would have lowered this floral piece down just a little bit so they wouldn't be quite so close to each other, but it's all right, so cute. So with this accent over here, I'm gonna want my sentiment to go right about here, right behind my skunk. And then I've got these fun little flowers that we'll get to in just a second. But first, let's stamp the sentiment. I have my stamp set, which you can see I've already pulled some off here. I was stamping earlier on a different card. Move those over there. And then for this one, let's do You Are So Stinking Awesome. One of my favorites in this set. All right, move this where you can see it better. And we're going to put my banner down, my stamping. See, I don't worry too much about whether it's straight or not, because I'm going to just light the stamp up straight. Whether the banner is straight or not doesn't really matter. I'm using a precision press or a stamp platform of most types. And looks pretty good on there. Let's go ahead and pick this up. Now the little bit of sticky tape that I have underneath my, my piece of paper there isn't as sticky as it used to be. So I'm gonna make sure that's stuck to my platform top. I'm gonna hold this down and make sure it stays put with just a little extra pressure there. Okay. Let's ink this one up. Let's see what I've got here. That would be good. It would be a pretty blue color. That one. Oh, let's go darker. Let's do this one. This one is called Blue Yonder. It's a good color for this one. So yellow could have been fun, but then we would have ruined my visual triangle with the yellow. You can see... Oh, I'm off camera again. Let me back up a little bit. There we go. You can see me here inking this one up. But if I'd done yellow, I would have ruined my little visual triangle, which I have going on with the flow of the yellow around the card and leading the eye around the card. Okay. And I love platforms because it's so easy to re-ink. Some of my ink colors beat up a little bit onto stamps, so it's really helpful to be able to stamp on the second or even third time to get a nice clean stamp. It's better, but I'm going to get a little bit more on there. there go. Third time's it. All right. There we go. Looking good. So what do you think? So far, so good. No, no glue spilling out. Hasn't dried up yet. 
see in a couple days if I decide I like that or not. I think I'm going to pop that up with some foam tape. Let me grab that. Just to kind of, with the skunk being so dimensional, it's just nice sometimes to be able to add that little bit of extra dimension to more than just the skunk. So he doesn't feel like he's kind of floating above everything else. And I do that a lot with my embellishments as well as my sentiments. Kind of helps ground some of the shapes, the shaker shapes that have that bit of extra dimension to them. One more piece should do it. All right, and we'll add that to the corner. And then we'll do embellishments. And of course, embellishments are my favorite part of finishing off a card. It gives it that great little finishing touch. And of course, Queen Company has the best ones around. There we go. Make it easy to finish up a card. So let's uh, take those flowers that I cut. Oh, is that straight? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Good enough for this. All right. So a couple of flowers. So I'm going to use these extra empty spaces around my skunk as home bases for my flowers. And yes, there is maybe a slight Bambi reference going on just a little bit for those of you that are fans. I've actually kind of forgotten about that, but somebody mentioned it um, when they saw the sneak peek the other day. You know, we won't do any trademark infringing here, so he's not <laughs> Bambi inspired per se, but certainly you could use that as a theme if you wanted to. But here we go with the um, fun flowers here, kind of daisy like ish flowers. There is kind of daisy ish flowers in the Fancy Florals kit or foundation set, so if you wanted to do, yeah. The fancy flowers, yes. I'm sorry. So there's some fun, like half daisies as well as full daisies. I'm going to fluff these up just a little bit, give them some of that dimension. What's talking about? But, but those are kind of like bigger, some of them. And I wanted for this one some kind of smaller ones. But you know what? I glued the wrong one here. This one, let's see if it's down. Is it stuck all the way? I can fake it. Okay. Let's put the big one back here, but I wanted that medium sized one to be kind of off on its own. And we're going to put some bling in the center of our flowers. So if it got a little messed up, that's okay. Well, plus we're going to put these little ones in the center. That's what I had intended. Let me try that again. All right. So here is that. And now this medium one, I kind of wanted to make it more of a uh, another visual triangle to have our three flowers in a triangle around the card as well to help move the eye around the card. So that's why I wanted that medium one to not be in the center. I wanted the weight to be distributed that way um, in a triangle. Okay, so we still will need a piece of maybe. So, okay, so I pull out a couple of just kind of fun colors and embellishments. And I've got ice flowers and jelly gems here. And I've got those in yellow, kind of an orangey ice um, uh, ice flower. The orangish in the ice flowers is kind of more yellowy, well, kind of in between. And so it's perfect for this paper that's a little bit more of a mustard yellow. And then I've got some of these uh, blue in the ice flowers and the jelly gems. So let's start by taking some of these blue. And we're going to add them to the center of our flowers here. So I'm going to add these little ice flowers to do another little visual triangle. So you've got the blue of the centers of the ice flowers and the whites of the flowers and the yellow all creating triangles around our focal point just to help move the eye around the card. And now, let's see, maybe just some small little jelly gems to kind of get, you know, I like little embellishment clusters on pretty much everything I do. I have a few little few little things here and there just again to kind of give additional texture and additional movement filling to the card. I want it feeling too static. Okay, let's try some of those blue ones as well. There we go. It's a happy feeling card. Maybe a little bit of sparkle and a little bit of color pops here and there. Okay. So there we go. The completed card. You are so stinking awesome. Fun one to send. And I wanted to show you a card I completed earlier using the exact same format. So same style, same sketch basically. And uh, 
just a different uh, shape. You can see how well they all fit. Even the tails being on the opposite sides didn't even end up mattering for this particular one. But lots of fun ways to use um, this particular uh, space for these animals being all the same size. I love that about them. I love that it makes it easy to do that. So let me bring you back over to one last thing here before I go. And that is for our sneak peeks. Let me transfer you to my desktop. And here we go. Oh, no, it didn't move. <laughs> okay, there it goes. Okay, so Marianne put together this using our next upcoming full kit. So maybe you can look at what she has here and guess the theme of it. <laughs> it's going to be a fun one. And I love what she did with, uh, with two of the shapes in this kit. Um, you might guess they all come in pairs. So fun things ahead coming up, I think, next month. Not entirely sure on the exact date yet, but maybe Wendy can chime in with more if she's uh, still there. But this is my sneak peek. Oh, and you know what? I forgot. We actually have two, and you've kind of already seen them. Let me transfer back over to my desk, and I'll show you a close-up of our new um, backdrop dies. Right here. Move these out of the way. So you saw them on the samples, right? But look how awesome these are. And these come out next month. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So many fun new textures and patterns. You've got this fun little plaid. You've got this great little set of swirls. And look at the leaves. I mean, it's just so perfect. I had to use it for the woodland set. And then this fun little row of uh, little punctured circles in, in fun little uh, lines. And this one is great, especially with the color popping out behind it. Can you see that on camera? Probably not. But to be able to cut, you know, a panel, uh, maybe in white, and then have a color pop through it, I think I think Marianne had one sample that used something like that, or maybe it was Greta, I don't remember. But anyways, a fun new set of dyes coming out uh, next month, too. So many, many fun things ahead. All right, so bear with us for a minute as I attempt to get Rebecca's video going. But thank you for joining me tonight. It's been a pleasure to be with you. It's been fun to be able to share this fun and cute um, new kit that I just, every time we launch a new kit, I'm just in love all over again. So thank you again very much for being with me tonight. All right, let's see if we can get Rebecca going here. So good night, everybody. Hello, Queen & Co fans. I'm Rebecca Keppel, and I'm super excited to be back here with you all on Queen & Co's Facebook Live. I have a pre-recorded video for you featuring the adorable Forest Family Stamps and Dies as well as a forest scenery die set, which is a builder die set that you can create all kinds of different scenes with. So I'll share a few cards and ways to use all of these stamps and dies together. First, let's look at the Forest Family stamps and those matching dies. First, I'm starting out by stamping several of the critters from the Forest Family stamp set. I'm using an alcohol-friendly ink and I'm working on alcohol-friendly paper. This way, I can color them in with alcohol markers. You could use what Whatever type of medium you like with these images, what I really enjoy about them is that they're not super, super tiny, so it gives you some room to play around, do some blending and shading. Here's the fourth character. It's a little bear with a bee. There's also a tiny bird, the three sentiments, and two different hearts. So you get three sentiments, four larger critters, and then the tiny little bird and two hearts. And you can cut all of those out with your dies. So here's the first three that I've already stamped. And I'll start out by just coloring them in with my Ohuhu markers, which I really love because they're super juicy, which makes them really easy to color images in and not see lines. Another way to avoid seeing lines is to go with the shape of the image. So in this area of the antlers, I am going straight up and down. And then on the curved areas, I'll go around 
around the curve. And then where I have a large opening, I like to use circular motion because that prevents seeing harsh lines in your coloring. Once all that coloring was done, I have the dies and I'll just hold them in place with some tape. Now this tape that I'm using is not a washi tape. It is specifically for die cutting and I like it because it has a little more tack than some of my washi tapes. That being said, I am careful to make sure I don't tear the image when I peel it off. Make sure they're super dry before you die cut them. So here, let's line them all up on the stamp set so that you can see everything that you have there and the three sentiments that are included. Happy thoughts of you, you're so cute, and love you. Now, let's take a look at the forest scenery dies and the many different ways that you can use them. Here are all the dies that come in that forest scenery die set. Now, I don't have them glued down on paper because I wanted to move them around a little bit to show you that there are really a ton of different options available here. So to start out, you have several trees and ways to make those trees customized. This large puffy tree can be cut out of cardstock or pattern paper like I did here. And you see that branch with the tree trunk fits perfectly onto the puffs of the tree. Now, here's one set of leaves. I cut them out of another piece of pattern paper. All of this pattern paper is from the Great Outdoors mat stack. So again, you could use the leaves that you see on the tree now. You could use the leaves that you see up above. This is an acorn. I only cut it out of one piece of pattern paper here, but if you cut it out of two pieces of pattern paper, it will look like a real acorn. There's also a honeybee hive, and you could have that hanging from this branch, which could be sideways, or in a minute, I'll show you how it could sit on the pine trees as well. So here are those pine trees. Now these long branches that could go sideways can also go right on top of the pine trees here and you could put leaves on them too. There's also a couple of trunks that you could place behind the tree like I did there. So again, you have lots of options of how you want these trees to look and how you would use them on your cards, depending on what type of card you are creating. So if it's springtime, you have green leaves. If it's autumn, you could have autumn colored leaves. I like that the leaves are a multi-cut die. So it is one die that cuts out 12 leaves. You could also use these leaves on the branches that you could work from the side of your card towards the middle. You could have small leaves on this branch. This branch is a little thicker than the one that I shared before that's now on the large pine tree. And there are two different sizes of those leaves. So you can see I have the large leaves and the small leaves on the branches. Now that we have cute critters and a bunch of forest scenery that we can use, let's use them to make some cards. For this first card, we'll use the moose. I've die cut a piece of pattern paper from the Great Outdoors mat stack with one of the foundations dies that creates a stitched rectangle. I've decided to use the trunks of the pine trees adhered behind the trees. So I'll just use a little bit of liquid glue on these trunks. I'm adhering pattern paper to pattern paper. So it doesn't really have to be a super, super, super strong adhesive. But if you have a favorite liquid glue that comes in handy with little details and die cuts like we'll be working with today. So for the first pine tree, I want it to be furthest back from the viewer. So I'll have this pine tree flat to the card and then we'll work with dimension on each piece getting higher and higher so that it's closer to the viewer. So this one I'll have on the left hand side. You can see that I'm able to place 
all three of these, both pine trees and the moose, on an A2 card front. So they are tall, but they're slender, which makes it really easy. So for this next pine tree, I'll use three pieces of foam squares, and these are relatively less dimension than some other foam squares. That will allow me to pop up the mousse even further so that everything is a step backwards. So I'll overlap it a little bit over the tree, but I want to make sure everything is seen. And since I'm popping up the moose even more, I'll be able to put that in front of that middle tree. The way that I'll do that is just layer two foam squares on top of each other. If you have another foam adhesive that's thicker, you could do that instead. I didn't have one handy, so I'll just layer two of the foam squares on top of each other. If I were sending this in the mail, I'd also put two uh, smaller foam squares on the antlers so they don't get bent down. But for this purpose, I think those are enough to share how you can get layers of dimension on this card using those seam dies. The scenery dies also come with two sizes of clouds. These are perfect for so many cards. I think any outdoor card, a little puffy cloud is the perfect touch or even embellishment. I'll have one popped up in front of the largest pine tree and one glued flat behind the moose's antler. I'm using a foundation die to cut out one of the sentiments that says you're so cute and then I'll just trim the right hand side so that I can place it flush to the right hand side of my card and you can see that I'm able to tuck it just slightly behind the larger cloud since that one is popped up on foam adhesive and that was just a lucky accident. I also added some grass to this tree a little bit of the sentiment was hanging off, so I just flip the card over and trim it right to the edge. Here's the grass that I mentioned. You can pop these up or you can have them flat to the card, and they just look nice next to the trees or underneath your critters. This is such an easy way to create outdoor scenes, and that moose is absolutely adorable. Next up, let's make a card with the bear. Now, the bear is not tall like the moose, but but he's kind of wide. So I have a couple of foundation dies. I've cut them out of the Great Outdoors mat stack and one out of white cardstock. Here's that honeybee hive, and I'll use a small blending brush with some brown ink to add some shading to the outside of that hive, and then I'll also add some shading in between the layers of the hive. This way you can see all of those curves and details of this honeybee hive. So I'm using Distress Oxide ink in Walnut Stain. You can use any ink that you want, any color that you want. You could use a darker yellow over the honeybee hive, whatever you like. I like to use Distress Oxide inks for this type of ink blending because they're super creamy. They don't soak into the paper like dye inks do, which allows me to soften those lines a little bit as I ink blend them. Now, to adhere this piece down to my background, which is the cute florals, I didn't want it all the way at the top because I wanted it to fit slightly lower on the card. And the good thing is I was using this white piece to cover up the top. So in order to measure that, I just held the white piece in place and then with tape runner behind that pattern paper, just stuck it down a little bit lower than would have been at the top of the card. And now that white piece goes on top and covers that gap between the top of the card and that orange pattern paper. I'll stamp love you, which is one of the sentiments, right on the pattern paper. If you ever have trouble stamping on pattern paper, I highly recommend Versafine Black Onyx ink. It's a pigment ink, so again, it sits on top of the paper. Just make sure it's dry before you touch it because it does take a little bit longer. I will pop up the bear 
again on those foam squares. See, he fits perfectly on that shape, which I love. And instead of measuring, which is my least favorite thing to do, I just hold the little branch in place and then bend it where I want it cut off. Then I'll place that little bit of liquid glue behind it and place it right on my card. A little bit sticks off the edge. I'm not that concerned about that. And I think it's kind of cute to have that branch sort of sticking off from the edge. So now we'll have the honeybee hive popped up and then a couple of leaves in a couple of different sizes. That's what's nice about having those options is you can pair them together and create a more realistic looking branch with a few leaves. For this card, we'll use the Happy Thoughts of You sentiment. Again, stamping on that pattern paper, I'll use the Versafine Black Onyx ink. Again, I'll make sure it's dry before I touch it. I have a really bad habit of smearing things. You can see I didn't get the whole happy, the top of it stamped out. And that was just because I didn't put pressure on the top of that sentiment. So that's the nice thing about a stamp. Here's a little bit of tape runner on the background pattern paper. I've cut down the happy thoughts of you pattern paper to four by five and a quarter so that they can mat nicely on that background. Now let's use that puffy tree. I want to line it up so that the trunk goes to the bottom of the pink paper and that the tree itself is not too high so it doesn't cover the sentiment. So holding the trunk in place will allow me to figure out where the leaves of the tree will go. And then this tree is nice and delicate in these branches. So again, having a liquid adhesive that you can get out just small fine lines with. So some type of precision point is really nice with die cuts like this. And once that's adhered down, then I can pop up the little fox that's going to sit underneath the tree. Once again, I'll just use some foam squares for that, super easy. And here are those red leaves that I cut out. So here's the other shape of leaves. We have the first two that are the same shape but different sizes, and this third set is a different shape, and I really, really like these as well. So sometimes it's easier just to put some glue dots down, some little dots of glue, and then pick up those die cuts with a, an embellishment tool, something like that that makes it easy for you to just grab them. And you can place them anywhere on the ends of the branches, in the middle of the branches. Really, this is one of those things where you can't go wrong. They look cute no matter where you place them. So just have fun decorating the tree. And don't forget that you can change the look of your scene by using different leaves or different colors of cardstock or pattern paper. I really hope you enjoyed checking out all these stamps and dies, and I want to thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with us. I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. Happy crafting!